Hey guys, more Blakey here and welcome back to another video. Today is episode 4 of our 2D platformer series and we're going to be covering animations, making our player stand still, run and jump with some visual bling. I'm also going to cover our player looking in the direction it's going. As always, all scripts from this video are available on my Patreon as well as all previous scripts and assets from this platformer series. Now let's get started. So with these two sprite sheets that we imported and set up in previous platformer videos, we're going to be making three animations. So let's go onto our player and then find the animation window. And then I'm going to grab my project folder and dock this on the right so we can access our animations and our animator. And then let's make our first animation. Press create. Then in our assets, let's make a new folder for animations. And we can just call this player idle. And with this, I'm going to find my two idle frames and I'm going to select both and then just drag them in here. And we can just set the sample size to something like two. And we have this nice, simple up and down animation. You may have way more frames in your animation. Feel free to adjust them however you want. But because mine is incredibly simple, I can have a very low sample size and just two frames. So let's make a run. So we do the same again. Create animation, player, run. Let's grab all of our run frames and drag them in. And you can see if I scroll through these, we have a nice little player run. For this one, let's set the sample size to something like 12. And then we can press play and see what this looks like. So I actually think that's going to be a little bit slow. So let's try 24. And that should be a little bit better. So with those two animations made, let's grab our animator window. And then let's select our player. And you can see we have these two states here. Now our animator window is where we handle the transitions between our different animations. When we created these animations on our player, it automatically added this animator component. As well as that, it creates an animation controller, which is what you're seeing right now. So with these animations, we can create transitions between the two, and then we can define parameters that we can control via code to decide when our player should switch from idle to run and vice versa. So let's right click on our player idle, press make transition, and then drag it to player run. And then right here we have this arrow, and this is where we can decide how we go from idle to run. So first Firstly, we want to disable exit time and we want our transition duration to be zero because we want the transition from animation one to two to be instant. And then it's looking for a condition. So we create conditions by going to parameters at the top of our window and then we can press the plus sign and we're going to use a ball. And we're just going to type in is running. And then under our conditions, we can add this is running ball and set it to true. But now we need to do the same in the reverse order. So let's right click, play idle, disable exit time, transition duration to zero and then add is running but this time we're going to set it to false so basically the only reason we will go from idle to run is if it's running is set to true and we will go back to idle if is running is set to false so now we need to go into our player movement script and essentially reference this is running boolean and change it as the player moves so i'm going to double click on my player movement script that we have been making throughout this series now one thing you may know is when we was handling a ground check we used two methods now the one i'm using for the remainder of this tutorial series is the raycast method so you can see i don't have an on collision enter function as we no longer need to use that so with that out of the way what we're going to do is at the top let's grab a reference to our animator components so let's do private animator and just call this anim and then in our start function let's assign this anim to the component on our player so anim equals get component animator and then in our update function all we need to do we're going to do if our move float so remember our move is assigned to our input of our left and right axes so if move is not equal to zero then we want to get a reference to our anim and then use set ball and then we're going to set the is running ball and then we use a comma and then we assign it to either true or false in this case it is true and then we just want to do if this isn't the case then we set anim.set ball equal to false so basically, if our move float is less or bigger than zero, then that means our player is either moving left or right. So we want our player to run. Otherwise, we want it to be playing the idle animation. And you can see now, while standing still, our player is idle. But when we move, we do activate our run animation now. Obviously, there is the issue that our player is not flipping. But we are going to fix this towards the end of the video once we have our jump animation out of the way. So let's do that next. So back on my animation tab, let's select our player and create a new animation. And I'm just going to call this player jump. So as you can see, I have a set of sprites from a jump animation, but I don't actually want to use all of them, so I can just pick and choose the ones I want. So in my case, I want to use the first four. So I'm going to select those and drag them in. And you can see as I scroll through these, it's a nice little jump animation. So I'm going to configure this a little bit so it suits my current jump. So I'm going to set the sample size to 24. And then I'm going to drag some of these sprites a little bit later on. So now when I play my animation, you can see my player starts off on its back foot and then has some hang time. And then on its way down, it starts to prepare to land with its forward foot. But for the last frame, I want it to hover on this sprite right here. And this is where it differs from our current animations. Because with our current animations, we want them to loop as our player runs. 
whereas we don't actually want that for our jump animation. So in our project tab, I'm gonna to go to my animations folder, go to my player jump and just disable loop time. So now we need to configure this in our animator tab. So with our player selected, let's go to our animator and you can see we have this new player jump. So let's rearrange these just to make it a little bit neater looking. So now we wanna make transitions from our idle and our run to our player jump. So now we could use any state for this. So regardless of the state we're in, we go to our jump when the player is in the air. But I'm just gonna do it from our two animations. If you had more animations and there was many different states for your player, using this any state node may be a better option for you. So let's right click on our idle, go to make transition. And now we need another condition here. So let's go to our parameters, do another boolean and just do is jumping and then we can disable exit time remove transition duration and then all we need to do is add one condition that being is jumping and we don't add an is running condition because quite frankly we don't care if our player is running or not if our player jumps we want our player to jump but on the other hand when we're going back to our idle to decide what animation our jump can go to that is where our is running ball comes back into play so let's remove exit time no transition duration and then two conditions one being is jumping at set to false and the second one being is running set to false but now we need to replicate this on the other side Except when we're going back to play a run, we need is running set to true and is jumping set to false. And now let's configure this in our script. So now what we can do, we can actually utilize our is grounded ball here and access our is jumping boolean in one line of code. So we can just do anim set ball is jumping and we can just set this boolean equal to the opposite of whatever our is grounded ball is if we want is jumping set to true and we set it to just is grounded that means jumping is set to true because the player is grounded and that doesn't make sense so we want it to be the opposite of whatever this value is and now if we test this out you can see i'm currently idling when i stand still when i move our run animation plays and when i jump our jump animation plays and these all blend together very nicely and of course it's important to remember these animations are rough and the actual game feel for it can be configured to your game and should be so now the last prominent issue we have is the fact that we are running backwards and while that is impressive that's not quite what we want for this game so let's go into our script and fix that so the first thing we're going to do is create a brand new boolean so we're going to do private ball is facing right as we want our script to know what way our player is facing. So when we want it to flip, it can assign the correct direction. Then down here, we're gonna create a new function. We're gonna do public void and call this flip. And firstly, we're gonna set is facing right equal to the opposite of that. We're essentially gonna get the transform of our player and flip it on the X axis. So let's get a reference to the local scale of our player. So let's do vector three local scale and we can set this new vector three equal to transform dot local scale. And we do this because we only want to access the x value. We cannot access this directly, so we have to make a separate variable for this. So then we can just do local scale dot x, and then we multiply this by minus one. That's because one times minus one is minus one, but minus one times minus one is one. So we will always be flipping our player regardless of the direction it's facing. And then finally, we actually need to set our transform dot local scale equal to local scale. But this isn't enough. We actually need to trigger this function in our update. So what we're going to do, we're going to check if the player is not facing right and our move float is bigger than zero, then we want our player to flip. So basically, if our player is looking left, but he's moving right, let's flip our player. And alternatively, let's do else if the player is facing right and our move float is smaller than zero, meaning our player is moving left, let's flip again. And now the last thing to do to round this off in our start function, because our player sprite is facing right, we need to initially set is facing right equal to true before our player is given any input. So with that done, you can see when I move right, our player is already looking right, so it will not use the flip function. But now our player is looking right and we move left, our player is flipped. And we can do this in the air, we can do this when idling, we can do this when running, and it works all very nicely and smoothly. So there you go, that is our three animation states done, as well as a flip function. Everything you need for an animation tutorial. Don't forget, all of the assets and the script from this video is available from my Patreon. Speaking of which, thank you very much to my Patreon supporters that you can see on screen right now. Make sure to stay tuned for the next episode and more of this tutorial series, as well as many others on this channel. And lastly, I just released my first main channel video in over nine months, so feel free to check that out as it took an absolute ton of time but apart from that i'll thank you all very much for watching and i will see you all in the next one bye